Are you thirsty? Have you water in your house in an emergency? Do you know how long you can live without water? Three days, maybe. Can you cook food without water? Not necessarily. And you'll soon get sick and tired of using canned water. When I say canned water, the water that's in vegetables and that. You need water to survive. And what Chris has created here is truly a system that I'm salivating over. It feeds water to his whole house when the water is down. You want to see this. Hey, Provident Preppers, I'm Jonathan. And with me here today is a new friend that I met about a week and a half ago. And he started telling me about his water system. And I just started to salivate because I've wanted to do something similar. And my good friend has actually done it. So Chris, welcome to our world of prep and, and you're doing the same thing. You are making preparations, you're doing great things, but your water system here is very unique and really quite awesome, if I can just say it that way. Thank you very and much. Tell us a little bit about when and why you built this system and why it's such a valuable system. Well, it started off where I used to have five, five gallon containers like this of water. And um, as I got older, they became heavier. Uh, we all know that five gallons of water weighs just under 50 pounds. And that's a lot of water to haul from the basement to the kitchen. And also, it doesn't stay fresh forever. And so that doesn't add up to much water being saved. And so I thought about a plan to um, initiate a system that would make it easier where I re rotate the water whenever I want to without having to drain it and waste it. And also that it's always on hand. I'm very blessed to have this large utility room which could fit these tanks in. And so I started a process, ordering two tanks, putting these tanks in and then plumbing them together. The good thing about this is the way I've done it is we can use it whenever we want to. And we, in our home, we use it every 30 days. So we'll just use the water till the level gets right down to the bottom here. And then we'll close it off and go back onto city water. And then when it's empty, top it back up again. So we, we constantly have fresh water on our hands. That was my reasoning behind doing this system. Probably the coolest part of this system, and you alluded to it a little bit, is that you've designed it to feed right into your household system. So you're not carrying water anywhere. It's just running through the pipes like it normally would. Not only did I put the tanks in, but I also ran it through a purification system, uh, just in case, you know. You never know if the city water is ever gonna be contaminated, or you may not know where you're filling these tanks up from the next time around. So you may need to purify the water before you can use it. So there is that to it as well. It's just not filled up and used. It goes through a purification system. And one of the things that I, I noticed right off is these tanks, they're, they're fairly tall, but they had to be so that you could get them through doorways. So they had to keep yeah. the diameter small enough. So if you plan to do something like this, you must first check your door widths on your house. I was very fortunate that it's a 36 inch door. My yeah. staircase is a 36 inch and my front door is a 36 inch. I could get them in. A lot of homes, the doors are not that wide. So you may have to go to a narrower tank to get it through to, to your basement. If you've got an unfinished basement, that's the best thing because you could bring it through a window if you had to or down the stairs as well but then you can you can frame around it and then your tanks are in there permanently keep in mind that when you put a tank into the basement you don't put it straight onto the concrete you first put it on a, on some wood and the reason for that is that concrete leaches through the plastic and damages it and so as you can see mine's on wood uh, which will protect the tanks from that happening and your system is 500 gallons, is that right? Correct, 250, 250. If I top it right up, I'll probably come away with 520 gallons. Okay. Yeah. Still a very considerable amount of water right. in a fairly tight space here. Yes. And as you were mentioning, the way I've plumbed it up is when I turn over to my emergency water, our home doesn't even know that I'm actually running emergency water because it now comes out of every faucet, every shower head, our washing machine, our dishwasher, it's everywhere. That's the handy part about it. You're not suddenly carrying one of these to fill up your washing machine. This is doing it for you. So let's talk through just a little bit about how this works. Uh, obviously you have two tanks and, and you don't keep them connected all the time for safety reasons. Is that right? Correct. Because there's two tanks and if there was an earthquake, these tanks could move. You know, one tank may move more than the other. And if they're connected together, they're certainly going to snap the plumbing. And um, so when we're not in use, you disconnect the plumbing. 
And um, when you're going to use it, like once a month, I'll come down here and connect the plumbing and then we'll use it. Do you want me to show you now how to connect this plumbing? Yeah, let's do. So in the floor, we have a floor drain. If any water comes into this room, it goes down this drain into a sump pump and it's gone. So if there's an emergency, one of these start leaking or dribbling, it'll go down here and be pumped out. So it won't flood the house down the, in the basement here. And I'm sure if any of you have had a flooded basement, there's nothing worse than that. This is my manifold that I've made, which fits onto each tank. So I'm going to connect with this tank first. It's a little trick because it's really tight. You'll see that I've got a quick disconnect here, a one and a half inch quick disconnect. That means that you can disconnect it pretty quickly. And here I've got a one and a half inch ball valve. If you're going to do this, use a Spears ball valve. Don't get any of those red handled ones or green handled ones, they junk. Eventually you can't turn them. These are fantastic and they lock into position. Okay, so that's the first tank connected. Now I'm going to do the second tank, which also has a quick disconnect on it. And then I'm going to connect to the pump now. Now I haven't spoken about the pump as yet. I'll speak about it in a moment. Let me just get this all connected up. Always have a wrench on hand to tweak these so they're tight. Never over tighten them because this is plastic, it'll crack. Okay, you'll see that I've got a valve here as well, or a tap rather, and that's if I want to um, drain the water out of these tanks for some reason, I've got this here and it'll go straight into, the, into this drain. Okay, so at this point now, I'm going to open these and just make sure that none of these fittings are leaking. Does that look good, Jonathan? Yes, it looks like it's everything's tight. Okay, it's not leaking, that's good. Okay, so now my two tanks are connected together, so basically we have 500 gallons of water on hand so now let's talk about the pump because that's really the magic that makes this work i mean it's yes. not going to work without yeah. this so teach us about this pump this over here ladies and gentlemen is a pressure pump it's a special pump it's just not a regular pump regular pumps just go on when you want them to you turn them on and when you don't want them anymore you go and turn them off this one is self-controlling when there's pressure on the pipes the pump will turn off when there's no pressure, when the pump registers that somebody's using water, the pump will turn on so that it'll continue to feed water to whichever faucet in the house is open, whether it's your shower, your sink, your washing machine, your dishwasher, or wherever, it'll come on. And then when that tap or that system is no longer using water and everybody's closed all the taps in the house, this pump will keep on pumping till it pressures up and then goes, okay, I don't need any more pressure and it'll turn off. And it'll stay idle until somebody again opens a tap in the house. And, and that's pretty smart because um, you, you don't have to worry about running down and turning the pump off. If you didn't have that, the system wouldn't work. So you, this is the number one priority, that and the tanks, <laughs> to get that done. All right, so I've just had Jonathan turn the water off coming in from the city. So in other words, our house now has no city water coming into it. And I'm going to sh show you my valve set up here. Now, I was able to do this plumbing. I've worked with PVC plumbing before for many years but this part over here I had a plumber come in and do it because I didn't know how to work with copper piping um, and so it's best that you get a professional to do that for you and you can tell them exactly what you want done. This valve at the moment is closed so now there's any water coming from here is closed so I'm going to open this valve and just the way I've got it plumbed here I need to close this one as well. This hose here is the hose that comes off a little a valve over here which I use to fill this tank so I can just open it and fill the tank and when it's done I just close it and pack the hose away um, so it's an easy way to fill my tanks up when I've used water all right so now this pump is going to pump water up this pipe it's going to go here this valve's closed it's going to be diverted this way it's going to go around there around the corner and then through this purification system this purification system consists of a carbon which removes smell and most taste. Then we go through a particulates filter, which removes any particles right down to a very low micron. And then after that, it goes through an ultraviolet light, which kills bacteria. So you're pretty safe going on here, okay? Once it comes out of there, it goes through my water softener and then back into the house. Now, I don't know if you know this, but most water softeners, 
or the ones I've come across, have a valve at the back here, and you push that handle across, and it bypasses the water softener. So in an emergency, you don't want to use your water softener because, you know, water softener charges itself up every night and spews out a lot of waters. You don't want to waste the water. So you just close that valve and bypass it, and that's cool. You don't mind if you've got hard water for a while. So now I'm going to ask Jonathan to go through to the bathroom on just on the side here and open up a tap. And as soon as the pressure drops, I don't know if you can hear that, but the pressure's dropping. Uh, pressure's dropping as those taps are running. And any second now this... There we go. My pump has come on because somebody's using a tap. In this case, Jonathan opened the bathroom tap in our basement here. So now it's pumping water to those taps. And it'll continue to pump until somebody turns those taps off. So I'm going to have Jonathan turn them off now. Even though the taps are closed, the pump's still running a bit. What it's doing is it's actually pressurizing the lines in the house. And as soon as it reaches the pressure point that this is set at, it'll turn off everything. Now it'll just take a moment to happen, maybe in, you know, 30 seconds or more. And then the pump, there we go, the pump's now turned off. And it's basically standing idle now until somebody opens a tap somewhere else in the house. And that is basically it, folks. That's really the beautiful thing is yes. it's, it's just there, it's doing its job when it's needed. Otherwise, it just sits there and, and yeah. isn't running. Yeah, it's just but idle. As soon as, as soon as there's a pressure drop, it, it turns just on. it turns on and it repressurizes. Yes. And so you're, you're just having, your house is just like it normally is. Yes, you, would, you, know, you wouldn't know the difference. The only difference you'd notice is that your flow rate is less than when the city water's on. But then you want that because you want right. your flow rate to be less so you can conserve your, your storage water. So for, for you and your wife, about how long would this last you? Well, depending on... Yeah, a woman likes to shower longer, you know this, eh? <laughs> but if I could get her just to wet herself, soap and, and then wash off, we could probably push it to 10 to 12 days. Okay. Yeah, to, uh, maybe even two weeks if we really went conservative, okay? Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you, Chris. This has been really enlightening. I think this is really good for our audience. This is really, a, for a lot of people, it could be a do-it-yourself project or something that you could have someone come in um, with minimal labor and install. And we should mention that these tanks, normally this room is black, so there's, there's no light that's penetrating in here that would grow anything. Very rarely are the lights on at all in here. Correct. This is just a truly magnificent system so let's let's just take a moment and recap this system if you will Chris um, first off and I think this should be this is important it's the peace of mind that comes with this uh, we've had four occasions now where we've had to use this water because of emergency uh, they've been doing our water lines in town and uh, the water's been down for six seven eight hours neighbors have gone off to work without a shower not Susan and I okay so quick recap two tanks in my case, 250 gallon tanks linked together with plumbing, PVC plumbing, going through a pressure pump. Pressure pump is then pushing the water through a purification system here. Purification system allows the water to be cleaned more than it already is. And then it goes into the house, goes through my boiler and out through all the faucets in the house. And um, it's on demand. When that pump feels there's a pressure drop in the, in the pipes, because somebody's opened a tap, it'll come on. And if they close the taps, it'll switch off again and then just stand idle until that process happens again. Somebody opens a tap. Now, I was going to mention, because this obviously does take some energy, you had created a, a system here that would allow you to, to have that backup energy to do that. Do you want to just mention briefly that system? Uh, before I had a large standby generator outside which powers the whole house when the power goes out. It's on a transfer switch. Those of you that don't know what a transfer switch is, that means that if, this, if the, your main power supply from your electrical company goes out, transfer switch waits about 30 seconds and kicks on the generator and then you have a power throughout the whole house. But before I had that put in, we had this put in. This power line here goes outside and just outside here there's a little pad where I can put a, a freestanding generator. And this comes in and it's got selected points in the house that are powered up. All my fridges, my deep freeze, and uh, critical components. You don't want all your food going rotten in your deep freezers and that. So, right. so that's, right. that's what the system here was all about. So that's another aspect of this that's, that's really neat. Yes. And uh, at some point, I guess you could put in a, a little solar system out there you, and, and run it that way or could. with a generator. And then, like you said, you have your whole house generator that uh, 
you know, as long as there's natural gas, you can, you can run it that way. Correct. I mean, there are people who could improve on this. There's always room for improvement. You could always add another tank, which is just as easy. You just put a, a T-joint and then you could put yep. a tank standing over there, you know, and add another tank. The gentleman comes to service my generator. He went home and drilled a hole through to his room next door, and he made one whole room there with eight tanks like this. Um, and, and he just plumbed just one pipe, but they're all together. Came manifolded through, together, all yeah. All manifolded together and then plumbed it into his pressure pump. So there's, it's endless amount of water you can connect to it. So one other thing, these blue filters, you can get bigger ones, much bigger. So if you have a large family, you can get them, they come right down to two feet of them. There's no end to the size of purification that you can add here. Of course, the big equalizer is an earthquake. Yes. We don't know what can happen. I mean, this could all become obsolete in a heartbeat. You know, but that's everybody's problem, you know. Yeah. But you, you can only do your best. Yeah, and that's what we do. We do right. our very best and... Yeah, and hope and for the best. Yes, yeah. most certainly. So, yeah. well, this has been wonderful. And I had been thinking about some kind of a system like this that I wanted to put into our home because the thought of packing water isn't delightful. The thought of using shower bags or things like that. And so I, I was just thinking the other day how... I really want to get a system that's that's plumbed in and that can just meet all of our needs just like they like we do from the city. Right. And this was just I think divinely sent to because I I was kind of trying to figure it out but but we don't need to reinvent the wheel. So okay. this is this has been uh, really really good. Now for the question of the day, what ideas and thoughts do you have for your water system? Comment below. And thanks for being part of the solution.